Hi, Sat Nam, it's me, Shakti Sundari, and um, yeah, just making this video this morning um, on sex beyond sex. So this is a workshop that I led at the London Tantra Festival this last weekend. A uh, very short workshop, only an hour, so quite um, a short time in which to convey such a profound subject. Um, but after I'd finished doing the workshop, I thought to myself, I really must do a live stream about this because um, even though it's something that I feel like I'm saying all the time and talking about all the time, I don't think it can be said enough. And I love sharing this understanding. Um, so this is a really condensed version of my talk and workshop on sex beyond sex. I'm not going to do any of the experiential part of it at all, so it's just the words part of it. Um, but see what you get from it and um, ask me your questions and post your feedback, whether we do that as I go along or afterwards. Be interested to hear what you've got to say. So, sex beyond sex, what does that mean to you? What does that evoke for you? Does that title um, interest you? Does it pique your curiosity? What does it make you feel? What does it make you think about? When I say sex beyond sex, does it mean anything? Does it, is it gobbledygook? Do you get intrigued because of the use of the word sex? I'm just curious. Um, when I did the workshop at the London Tantra Festival, there were people there and I asked them the same question and there were lots of different answers from, yeah, wanting to experience more from sex than ordinary intercourse and wondering how to experience that to already knowing that um, the tantric way of living can, ex can, can open us to the, to the knowing, to the lived embodiment that all of life is a making love to um, just being curious, to wanting more intimacy, um, all kinds of reasons really. But I know that when we uh, use the word sex and we talk about better sex, normally people's ears prick up and they think, oh, this might be something I need to listen to, right? So the reason I gave this talk and the reason that I'm so passionate about this is that obviously um, this is my life and this is something that I'm very passionate about because it's been my own experience. I came to this understanding and this um, knowing through seeking out Tantra about um, actually, no, not 15 years ago. I get lost in time. Maybe nine, ten years ago, I was going through the breakup of my second marriage. I hadn't had sex for four and a half years. Um, and that was as somebody who had previously been a very sexual being and very in touch with her body and her sexuality. I've not had sex for four and a half years. I had two young kids. Sex had been painful because I'd had a vaginal injury during giving birth. That's very common, by the way, if you don't know about that. And um, as a result of the breakdown of my marriage, not having any sex, uh, feeling very alone, being desperate for love, um, feeling a bit lost in my life, I was looking for answers and I wanted to uh, find a way to be happier as a human being, find a way to integrate my sexuality with a spiritual yearning that I've always had and that was becoming stronger and stronger because I was already on the conscious path, um, open up to exploring if I'd ever be able to have enjoyable sex again after four and a half years of no sex and painful sex. Um, and find love, you know, I, even though I was in a marriage and I had kids and friends, I, um, I guess on a deep level, I didn't really feel loved or in love with myself. And um, I was searching for answers. And Tantra was one of the practices that I took up. Um, Kundalini Yoga, Tantra, I was already teaching a conscious, conscious dance practice for Mamiya Technique and then Tantra called to me and yeah that added another whole dimension to, to my journey, to my path, to my healing, to my awakening, to my self-discovery and then I went on this journey, so this journey of exploration through Tantra, through Kundalini Yoga, through ecstatic dance, through body work, through Reiki healing 
and also in my personal life having many lovers and many sexual experiences so yes sex was no longer painful and that was a massive relief and my very first lover after not having had sex for four and a half years was Osho Sanyasin he he was the one who introduced me to the very basics of Tantra and what that is. I write about this in my book, by the way. And so I began to have experiences. I experienced um, good sex. I experienced amazing sex. I experienced all kinds of things that I'd never experienced before. Energy orgasms, having sex with somebody across the room, having sex with somebody energetically in a different country. Um, expanding my understanding of what sexuality is entirely and expanding the pleasure that I receive and experience exponentially. Also some, a few mediocre experiences in there. It wasn't all ecstatic, but also what is important to say is that as my experience of pleasure expanded and as my experience of my own sexuality expanded, so in equal measure, did my experiences of difficulty and challenge and darkness um, balance that out? So, you know, of course, this path, and again, this is so I came to the realization, having had all these amazing experiences, having experienced making love with the divine, experience of feeling that I'm making love with God, experiences of making love within my own body, experiences of sitting with spiritual teachers in whose presence I am blissfully ecstatic and orgasmic in my being. After all these many experiences and learnings and teachings and reading and processing, I came to realize that this path of Tantra is about self-realization. So the goal is not, there is no goal. <laughs> in a way, it's not to have better sex. Although as we walk this path, our experiences of life, including sex, will naturally get better because we are connecting more with our bodies. We are expanding our capacity for mindfulness and mindlessness. And really, Tantra is about being without mind and being fully in your body simultaneously. And that lovemaking that then happens between the divine masculine and the divine feminine. So I came to the realization that Tantra is about self-realization. It's about awakening spiritually and sexually. It's about love. It's about truth. It's about being total. And um, se better sex is just a side effect, but it's no longer a need. Uh, it's simply one aspect of living. And... Sex beyond sex then becomes, in my understanding, three things. One, it becomes the knowing that the divine masculine principle, consciousness, pure consciousness, the witnessing presence of, of all, and Shakti, the divine feminine aspect and principle, which is the energy that creates all worlds and all of life, and that is constantly moving in us, within us, between us, around us, that is in everything we see, touch, taste, hear, smell, those two energies are constantly dancing together in union. And when we are able to sit and open ourselves to that knowing, we experience that within our own bodies and within our own beings too. That is ecstatic, that is blissful. That's why my tagline is awakening your ecstatic potential because your ecstatic potential is right there in that lovemaking that's going on all the time within you and around you, that's creating you, that you are creating. And the Shiva and Shakti cannot be separated they are obviously always eternally one. So that is sex beyond sex. That is number one. Number two is that then when you do choose to be sexually intimate with another, that it goes way beyond your genital joining. So sexual connection, intimacy becomes a love making between those two aspects, the divine feminine, the divine masculine within you, within the other, and then between you. So you are then making love consciously um, on all energetic levels, on all chakra levels, on all energy body levels, and 
it's no longer simply about a dispersing of frustration or a releasing of pent up energy. That energy can be channeled and flowed through your entire bodies and energy bodies to create an alchemy of transformation and recreation of new and recreation or creation of love that is a blessing to you both and is a transformation to you both and is a blessing to the world and the cosmos. So that's the potential for sex beyond sex. And finally, in that union, in that level of union, gender and sex becomes lost and blurred in a way because masculine and feminine dance as one. So um, yes, there's always a polarity, but then those polarities dance so intimately that they become one. So she become, becomes he, becomes she, becomes he, becomes one. So uh, that those energies can dance together in the lovemaking, switching from one pole to the other, one person leading, one person surrendering, one person embodying their Shiva, one person embodying their Shakti, both of them embodying both together. So there are these infinite potentialities for those polarities then to become one. And Tantra is a path of non-duality. It is a path of oneness. It's a path of bringing together. So this is why it's important and yummy and delicious because there's so much um, polarity in the world right now and those pol polarities are becoming more and more extreme and far apart, right? And this is a path of bringing those extremes together and unifying. It was really interesting. In my workshop, I asked in one of the exercises, whether it was a man or a woman didn't matter, but a pair of people to embody the Shiva and to embody the Shakti. And so there were some opposite sex pairs, but there were some same sex pairs. And I just happened to observe it wasn't the case for everybody. There were two men who were doing this exercise together, and one was Shakti and one was Shiva. And these two guys were finding it really hard to overcome their fixed notions of who they were for one of them to embody the Shakti and one of them to embody the Shiva. So it, it was pushing up against their, their sort of limited concepts of themselves. But, you know, the more we are able to question that and embrace that and recognize that we are all and both, the more then the, the fixed polarities that we entrench ourselves out there in the world will become malleable and flexible and we'll see and recognize that the other is me. And that's really important at the moment. So, you know, Tantra isn't just something about having better sex and transcending. It's actually really um, an important learning, teaching, knowing to take out into the world in terms of recognizing the other is me in this world where there is right now so much polarity and um, objectification and projection of our shadow onto others. We need to come back and realize that you are me and I am you. And when we realize that and know that, it's going to be harder and harder for us to do that ridiculous stuff of creating war and conflict in the world. Right, final point um, is how do we get there? So I've come to that knowing and that realization, that experience. I don't live in that place all the time, by the way. It comes and goes, but it's more and more my knowing and my experience. Um, but of course, it comes and goes. I'm a human being. I'm not a self-realized master. Um, but how do we get there? How do we get there? Well, I got there by following my heart and following the path of desire. It took me on all kinds of twists and turns. Some of them were really bloody painful. You don't necessarily have to experience that pain. That was my, my way. Um, there are practices, so many wonderful tantric practices that we can embrace to guide us on this path. I teach tantric meditation, the 112 meditations from the Vijnana Bhairava Tantra. Any embodied practice will take you on this journey of opening to connection with embodied awareness. It's really important that you connect body and mind. So meditate, yes, but meditate and be embodied. If you meditate and transcend and go out of the body, there's still this split that's 
happening in Tantra is about bringing together body and mind, sex and spirit, feminine and masculine, above and below, transcendent and immanent. We want to integrate. So any practice of embodied awareness, Tai Chi, ecstatic dance, tantric meditation, all of those practices can help us come to this realization. Sitting with a teacher who emanates this energy will awaken yours reading about it, doing processes, and at the same time, you know, in our world, we are so um, fixated with doing, 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 and getting results. I have to say that although I do teach these practices, and they are super powerful and very simple, actually, and that evolution and opening takes time, normally, I've also had the experience of being with lovers who know nothing about Tantra and all of this stuff, but through the power of their love and their devotion, together we have experienced the most transcendent sex beyond sex together, and that was purely because they were able to leave everything behind and just connect right into their hearts and bring that devotion into our lovemaking. And there we were in uh, timelessness, uh, love making where we were merged into one and continued to make love for hours on end without any concept of time whatsoever. So love is really all that it's about. Anyway, I feel like I've talked really quickly and shared a lot, but I was passionate to share that before I put my little note cards away from the weekend. If you have any questions about what I've just said, please post them and or comments and let me know if that makes sense or if it sounds like a load of nonsense <laughs> um, yeah let me know uh, tantra tantric meditation is um something i am very passionate about and also if you're interested in learning that with me from me tell me um because i was doing an in-person course not enough people came so i i cancelled it um, but I'm up for doing it online. If, any, if enough people are interested, I'll do it online, but we'll see. So thank you guys. Thanks for watching and um, Satnam. Lots of love. Have a beautiful day. <laughs>